Aaron Sievercrop joining us from UW Dog Pound. Uh, that's the SP Nation platform for Washington Athletics. Aaron, uh, it's the lifeblood of any program. It's recruiting. It's been amped up in recent years under Chris Peterson there in Seattle. Uh, how does the class shape up as we stand right now? Well, uh, I would say that Washington has the third best class right now in the Pac-12. Uh, we have 16 commitments. It's going to be a small class. We didn't graduate that many kids. I think 13 seniors, and we lost four early entrants uh, to the NFL draft. Uh, right now, um, I would say the strength is at the wide receiver core. Uh, we're bringing in three really highly touted uh, uh, recruits out of California. Yeah, so uh, one of the best players uh, that we stole from uh, Oregon was a defensive tackle. He's the number five rated defensive tackle in the country, and he dominated at the Army Bowl. He has a very quick first step. Uh, everyone um, in the West wanted him, and it was a surprise that Washington ended up getting him. Um, we also got a legacy uh, Oregon Duck uh, recruit. Uh, Elijah Molden, his dad, Alex Molden, was a big-time player for Oregon, played in the NFL for several years, and it was a huge shock that he committed to Washington over Oregon and Stanford. Um, you know, the class is very well balanced. Uh, it's it's There's not any five-star recruits, but there's a lot of four-star recruits. I think out of the 16 commits, 11 or 12 of them are four-star commits. Uh, so that's very good. Um, you know, we beat a lot of uh, other schools for a lot of these players. We beat USC. Uh, we beat Stanford on several players. Um, there's a couple players locally that we uh, lost out on. Foster Sorrell, I'm sure you've heard that name. He's the number one offensive tackle in the country. Uh, he chose Stanford over Washington, and many Washington fans were not happy with that. Um, unfortunately, Stanford just has a very good pedigree of taking offensive linemen into the NFL or putting offensive linemen in the NFL, and they sell their, uh, their education better than any school in the nation. So uh, top to bottom. It's well-balanced. It's got a lot of talent. And I would say that uh, a lot of these guys will be able to play their redshirt freshman year. Aaron, we're only a couple of weeks away from National Signing Day. So as we stand right now, are there a couple guys out there that are kind of riding the fence? Washington's prominent on the list, but that you would really love to bring in to really seal this class? Yes. Um, Ohio State fans might not like that I say this, but uh, um, Wyatt Davis out of St. John Bosco, um, is rumored to be visiting Washington, uh, possibly USC in the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, he's a kid that uh, number one offensive guard in the nation. Uh, there's rumors that if he visits Washington, he might commit to Washington. He plays with a couple of former St. John uh, Bosco uh, players who are committed to Washington, so we have a good chance at that. There's also a player named DJ Johnson. He's committed to Miami right now, one of the be uh, best DNs in the West. Um, He's been all Miami on uh, Twitter, on all of his social media, but uh, the rumors persist that he wants to stay on the West Coast. So that's another name to look out for. Hey, Aaron, looking at the uh, high school football play in Washington, in the state of Washington, uh, your thoughts about uh, the caliber of play? What are, what are some of the obstacles and challenges for the program uh, in, in uh, matching up with the likes of USC in particular, Stanford and Oregon, obviously, in the North Division? Well, uh, obviously, California has a bigger population, so more players uh, come out of California than Washington. Washington has a really great brand of football. Actually, uh, it's being more highly recruited this year than it ever has been. Uh, coaches are coming up and seeing a Foster Sorrell, and they're noticing some other players that they want to offer. Um, Washington, I would say about 25% of their roster comes from Washington. 75%, 70% comes from California. So the obstacle is convincing the highly rated kids out of california not to go to usc not to go to ucla and come up all the way to washington washington unfortunately only plays uh in southern california once uh a year because of the pac-12 uh uh split sometimes they they actually don't play usc and uh, ucla kids want to play in front of their parents so that's an obstacle plus we're up here in the pacific northwest which is pretty far away from a lot of places so um you know we have a great tradition we have great facilities. We just improved our uh, stadium. We have, if we can get kids on campus, uh, Coach P can convince them. Um, but uh, typically, Coach P right now he's uh, he's uh, going against Stanford. He's going against the USC. He's going against the UCLA. Those are the schools that he's having to uh, convince kids to commit to them. Yeah, definitely. Chris Peterson doing what uh, many expected him to do: go to Washington, where he had 
more resources, more recruiting base than at Boise State, able to do a little bit more uh, considering what he achieved there and bring it to Washington. It's only taken him a couple of years to reach the top four in the country. All right, uh, Aaron uh, Sievercrop from UW Dog Pound joining us. Uh, we appreciate it, Aaron. Thank you.